That shoe has a nylon plate. This is carbon fiber. I run in carbon fiber plates in my training in order to test the shoes out for all of you uh, to get them to 50 miles. Let's go, let's go, Nike Zoom Fly 4 in for review. I realize we're a little late to the game. I picked up this shoe, uh, let's see, right before the New York City Marathon. Speaking of which, there we go, shout out to New York. Um, actually, I haven't asked this in a little while. Where are you, this is not the question of the day. Where are you watching from right now around the world? Drop your country flag proud down in the comments, all right? Is it Switzerland? Is it South Africa? Is it Taiwan? Is it, where are you, I, Ecuador, where are you watching from around the world? I'd appreciate it. Okay, so a neutral road running shoe. All right, let's do that twist test. All right, it's twisting actually a little more than I expected. And onto the scale, oh yeah, 39 in the heel, 31 in the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. Coming in at eight and a half ounces in my size. Little heavy for a training shoe, okay? But I realize some people might use this for uh, for racing, we'll come back to that in a minute. So six out of 10 for that weight score. There was the women's size eight, men's size nine on your screen. And oh yes, I do have, this is why we have the archive of running shoes, the Zoom Fly 3, I've held onto it for 18 months now, okay? And so let's put it on the scale as well. I think it's about the same. Yep, this is coming in at 8.6. So right in that range, 8.5 to 8.7 for the Zoom Fly 3 and 4. The upper is a mesh upper and it's a fly knit. Um, and it's got this collar that I'm not, I don't love it. You know, I don't, I, if you watch a lot, I don't love the booty style collar here uh, that wraps around your ankle. A little too loosey goosey for my liking. There's that inner padding on the inside of the heel counter, which is fine, it's fine. You know, I know that's what the next percent two is leaning toward these days. I'd love to break, I'd love to talk to Nike and be like, you know, why this approach with this padding here on the inside? I'll just give a little warning. Um, I had blisters from the next percent two in New York City, and I would foresee this causing some rubbing for some people, depending on the anatomy of your foot makeup, okay? Also, Nike, what are we doing here? Especially considering the price point. Can we just work a little bit more uh, engineering into this heel tab. So this is the heel counter. This is the heel, this is the collar of the shoe that wraps around your ankle. This is the tab right at the top of the heel counter. And this, oh, is dangerous. I, I could see this cutting into someone's uh, Achilles tendon in a, in, a, in a not so good way. So watch out there, make sure your socks are, are well positioned. I just don't know why they didn't do a little more softness or put, put some more padding or I don't know something there at the I suspect that will change in the future that at the top there of the 
Heel tap. So lockdown score, you know, it's okay. Um, it's it. Uh, I don't know. It's a it's a full one piece of material for that uh, for the entire upper. So I like to I like the tongue to be actually separated from the rest of the upper, so you can really kind of position the tongue where you want and work with the laces a little bit more to get that precise lockdown. And that's why my lockdown score is a little bit lower. Overall score, yep, it's because of it's because of everything I already just talked about. Five and a half out of 10 midsole. It's React, it's a thermoplastic elastomer uh, base for proprietary formula. And I should also mention in that React is a fully sandwiched carbon plate, uh, a little softer, or sorry, a little less uh, rigidity to that carbon plate compared to the uh, next percent lineup. Let's just do that. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's nice. It's got, an, it's got a nice energy return, okay? Um, not an epic. I think, uh, again, when you run in so many different midsole materials, you just learn what gives energy back and what does not and what that feel is like. And I'm just not feeling it through the React foam at this point in 2021 Nike. So that's why I didn't break into the eights. Overall score, um, overall score, yeah, it's, I just, I don't know. I think kind of like, kind of like Hoka and EVA, I think Nike and React is gonna have to evolve or maybe even just discontinue it at some point. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens in the next two or three years. Okay, moving on to that outsole. We're looking at carbon rubber on the outsole. Um, just fine. I, you know, standard score, let's reduce a little bit under the forefoot of that, of that carbon rubber. And then maybe let's enhance this, uh, this groove here. You know me in the decoupled groove, all right, from the midfoot down to the heel. Let's just make it a little, uh, a little, a little bigger, a little deeper. And it is a little bit of a narrow landing. You can probably see that there on the outsole. So if you don't like a, unstable i don't feel unstable in it but if you know you're that you know your foot strike creates a little bit of uh just you know you got to watch your ankles a little bit this is not the shoe for you because it is a very narrow landing fit true to size narrow in the heel a little narrow in the foot uh, uh in the midfoot fine in the forefoot for me i didn't feel too scrunched there uh in the toe box moving on to the comfort score seven and a half out of ten nothing to write home about positive i'm gonna <laughs> this is not great i'm gonna go with the breathability eh, of the upper it is breathable which i don't know if you want that in the winter months drawback is the collar but especially the heel tab i'm just like nike this is has potential for serious blisters there at the back of the achilles tendon okay durability prediction Mm, 350 miles all right 350 we're gonna stick it there how will i use this shoe i am not we are relegating at about 22 miles i'm not gonna take it to 50 miles you know me in training and this jumps into the price point as well might as well put it out there and who is the best for so 160 dollars um and i might even just say so i would definitely buy the endorphin speed one or two from Saucony over this guy that, that shoe has a nylon plate this is carbon fiber i run in carbon fiber plates in my training in order to test the shoes out for all of you uh to get them to 50 miles but my my initial notion is to not train all the time in carbon fiber plates because I like to save them for race day. And I like my legs to feel extra, extra energy on race day where you're like, whoa, let's rock and roll. Let's do this. Let's race day. We got carbon fiber plates, uh, plates under our feet. Um, so I don't love training in plates all the time, which is one of the reasons I am relegating this shoe today. And at $160, like it's not a horrible price point. There's my score. Uh, but I think Nike, um, I don't know. I just think there's better options out there for you. And actually, let's do it right now. Other shoes to buy. I would buy the Speed one or two, which I realize is a a uh, the same price point. However, it's uh, it's about an ounce lighter. The Speed one or two, okay, less than an ounce, a little less than an ounce lighter. So I would do that one over all the others. There, the SL twenty point two is uh, similar. I put the SL twenty in there because. It's um, a little bit of a firmer ride, which you feel in this, it's similar to this carbon fiber plate ride in the, in the React, um, and, but it's dirt cheap. I mean, $79, that's, that's a great uh, price. And the Adidas Takumi Send 8, uh, I have not tested yet. All right, a lot of people are excited that shoe. 
excited about that shoe and then the asics magic speed at 149 all right shoe quick specs for the nike zoom fly 4 there you go soak it in all right our mesh upper react foam carbon rubber on that outsole and again 160 dollars i will link to all these shoes down below in the description from running warehouse in case you're interested in picking any of them up and that early score which is actually my relegation score 6.45 out of 10. i don't know nike i just think you're overthinking it a little bit i think you're overthinking it with like it's too heavy for a racing shoe and it's too much too much just for a training shoe like and it's too heavy for like a threshold day maybe a tempo day i forgot to say who's the best for like if you want something that's i don't know it's just like it's a little much i think nike is my thought i think you could do better so there that's where i'm at all right everyone comment of the day question of the day terrence huey uh fantastic running montage oh yeah this is from the zoom fly 3 review terrence huey fantastic running montage and really well edited uh two fancy visuals are not why i watch the channel but did want to tip my hat to your hard work. Thank you, Terrence, for tuning in and for mentioning some of the zestiness we try to put into these shoe reviews just to keep it spicy here on YouTube. Question of the day. Uh, this, I definitely have never asked this before. And I think there's some good value. I bet hopefully there's some good value down below. How do you help yourself fall asleep? At, at, you know, if you're struggling to fall asleep, we've all stared at the ceiling, maybe before a big race. What do you do? Like, what's what's part of your uh, secret sauce for falling? Me, you know, definitely reading a book. Um, hmm, reading a book, reading a book, I guess is what I would have to say. But what's your tip down below in the comments? All right, there you have it. Another Nike in the books. We'll toss it to the Nike running shoe playlist right there, right there, right there. All right, seek beauty work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.